Many have wondered when to use the cosine rule or the sine rule. In this video, I'm going to show you how and when to use the sine rule using question 11 of the 2023 grade 12 mathematics paper 2 for internal candidates. All right, so when do you use the cosine rule? All right, here are the conditions that allow you to use the cosine rule. For example, if you have a triangle, a triangle that is not a right angle triangle, uh, let's say triangle A, B, C. All right, the first thing you have to do is to label the sides. Okay, so here we have A. This angle A, it means the side that is opposite to A will be written with a small letter A. Then this angle here, B, the side that is opposite to this angle will be a small letter B. Then this angle here, C, will be written with a small letter C. All right, so for you to use the sine rule, number one, you are supposed to have the complete path. What do I mean by that? So when you have a given angle and a given side, which is opposite to this angle, then we call this a complete path. Number two, you should have a half path. So for you to use the sine rule, you should have these conditions satisfied. You should have a complete path, for example, this given angle and its given opposite side, and a half path, for example, if you've been given an angle here and you are being asked to find a side, okay? So a complete path is when you have been given an angle and its opposite side, and then the half path is when you are, you've been given either an angle and a missing side or a side and a missing angle. So these are the conditions that are supposed to be satisfied for you to use the sign rule in solving trigonometric problems. All right, coming back to our question, this question is saying, calculate angle QPR, angle QPR. So which means this is the angle that they want you to find. Now, how are you going to find this angle? All right, so for us to find this angle, first of all, let's indicate its missing side. Its missing side will be a small letter P because the angle here, the vertex where the angle is, is a capital letter P. Even here, let's also indicate small letter Q to mean the side that is opposite to this angle. Even this angle here, we have R, so we are going to write a small letter R like that. All right, at the moment, we've been given an angle and its opposite side, so meaning we have a complete path, and also we've been given this side and its opposite angle. And they don't want us to find this angle, but this angle, when you look at this angle here, is missing, you don't know it, and also its opposite side is missing. So, which means that we are going to use this complete path and this half path to find this angle here first, then we're going to use this, the properties of sum of angles in a triangle to find this angle here. So, which means we are going to use the sine rule because we have the complete path and a half path to find this angle here so that it helps us to find this angle. All right, so we're going to say sine 105, so sine 105 degrees over the opposite side, which is 70 is equal to so because we are putting sine on the top so even here we should also say sine because we are looking for this angle here we are going to say sine r over the given side is this 41.6 so our aim is to find the, the angle r and then so that it helps us to find this missing angle so at this stage we cross multiply we are going to have 70 times r so we shall have 70 times R, 70 times sine R is equal to sine 105 degrees times 41.6. 41.6. Remember, we want to find the value of sine R. So what we do, we are going to divide both sides by 70, like this. So this and this goes, we are going to remain with sine R is equal to, you get your calculator and punch this, so you have sine 105 times 41.6 is equal to, is equal to this. Then remember, we are dividing by 70, so you say answer 
divide by 70 then we get this 0 0.57 so we get 0 0.57 4035919 all right so for us now to find what angle r is we are supposed to multiply on both sides of this equation by sine inverse so sine inverse of sine r we are going to remain with it. angle r is equal to sine inverse of 0 0.574035 one nine so to find an angle finally we say shift because we want to find the sine inverse shift then sine so sine inverse of answer which gives 35.032 so meaning angle r is equal to 35.03214 which gives Angle R to be equal to 35 degrees. So angle R here, angle R here is 35 degrees. Now that we know what this angle is and what this angle is, so to find this angle that they, they are looking for, we are going to say this angle plus this angle then subtract from 180. So what we are going to have now is, so therefore, because they are saying angle QPR, angle QPR is equal to 180 degrees minus 105 plus 35. 105 plus 35 degrees. These are degrees. So you get your calculator because this is paper 2. You punch and say 180 degrees minus 105 plus 35 degrees and this gives 40 degrees so this gives 40 degrees so which means we have now answered and found the angle here which is uh, 40 degrees so this angle here is 40 degrees all right the next question says calculate the area of triangle pqr all right under normal circumstances the letter on the middle here, in this case the Q, indicates the angle that you are supposed to use when calculating the area of this triangle. And then these letters that are on the left and right indicates these small letters here, the sides that you are supposed to use when calculating this area. But in this case, we don't know the side. We don't know this side. Okay? We don't know this side. So what we are going to do, whether we use this side and this angle and this side to calculate the area, or we use this side and this angle and this side, or we use this angle and this side and this side, the area is going to be the same. So what we are going to use, we are going to use uh, the known sides and an angle. Okay? We're we are going to use the known sides and this angle. The area will be the same as that when we use this side and this side and an angle. Okay, so since this is not a right angled triangle, we are going to write a formula for finding the area of a non right angled triangle. So area is equal to half. In this case, we are going to use this side and this side and this angle. So we are going to say half Q times R then sign the sign of this angle sign 40 degrees so we are going to have half q half times 70 times r r is the side that is 41.6 41.6 meters then times sign sign 40 degrees so you just get your calculator and say 70 times 41, 70 times 41.6 times sine 40. And this gives 1,871 point. So it gives half times 1,871.797519. So because this half is multiplying this, we're just going to divide this number by 2. Okay, so... 
we are going to say on the calculator answer divide by 2 and this gives 935.89 so 935.8987597 so when the degree of accuracy is not specified you leave your answer to three significant figures okay so we are going to have one two three so the target value is uh, five then check the neighbor of five is more than five so meaning we're going to round this up so we're going to have 936 okay and the units are in meter squared okay meter squared so this is the area they needed for this triangle here all right the next question says calculate the shortest distance from q to pr so calculate the shortest distance from q q is here to pr so in other words what they want you to do is to draw a line from Q to join PR. And so this line is going to join PR at 90 degrees. Okay? Before doing this, this triangle was a non-right angled triangle. But after doing this, this triangle now has become the right angled triangle. A right angled triangle is born. So meaning from here to there this will now be the height which is equal to the shortest distance so they want you to find the height which is the shortest distance so whenever you hear of shortest distance it means they want you to find the height now how do you find the shortest distance so for you to find the shortest distance because in a right angled triangle has been born you are going to use the formula for finding the area of a right angled triangle which is area is equal to half b h so area we found that area is 936 square meters so where there's area here we're going to replace 936 is equal to 1 over 2 the base the base the line that is mentioned or the side that is mentioned p r p r or the side where which is being met when you move from here to there will become the base so the base is 70 meters times the height the height is the shortest distance that we are looking for so we're going to write it as it is as h we can actually reduce this fraction here so we have 2 into 2 1 2 into 70 is 35 then 35 times h we're going to have 936 is equal to 35 h or the height so to find h we divide by 35 on both sides so 35 then we're going to have so you get your calculator and punch so you have 936 divide by 35 and this gives 26.7428 so we have 26 point seven four two eight five seven one four is equal to h this height here so we need to round this answer correct to three significant figures so we have one two then the third significant figure is seven you check the neighbor the neighbor is less than five and so we are going to round down so meaning we are going to have 26 point seven is equal to h all right because we are not told to find h we are told to find the shortest distance we are going to say therefore h is equal to 26.7 meters which is equal to shortest distance all right so whenever they tell you to find the shortest distance it means they want you to find the height of that triangle all right, so now we are done with part A of question 11. So we now go to part B. The question says solve the equation tan theta is equal to 2.75 for theta from 180 to 270. All right, so the first thing that you are supposed to understand when you are given such a, a question are the quadrants. Okay, so we have the quadrants. This is the first quadrant. This is the first quadrant 
this is the second second quadrant and this is the third quadrant and this is the fourth quadrant so what you have to know is that because we are looking at tan what you have to know is that all the angles in the first quadrant are positive in the second quadrant only sine is positive in the third quadrant only tan is positive and in the fourth quadrant only cosine is positive so for you to master this you can say all students take coffee okay all students take coffee for you to master right so now what you have to know also is that the angle here is 90 degrees even this one is 90 degrees this one is 90 degrees this one is 90 degrees together they make 360 degrees all right coming back to our equation the equation which they want us to solve first of all we are going to find what tan is in the first quadrant considering that the values of tan are not ranging from 90 but from 180 to 270 so first of all we need to find this basic angle of tan in the first quadrant so we are going to say tan we can say we can use any data let's use alpha the basic angle alpha is equal to 2.75 we are just rewriting this by replacing theta we are replacing theta with a basic angle alpha because our range this uh, the first quadrant here is 90 and our range is starting from there so meaning the angle that you are going to find here for tan is not going to be part of the solution that's why we're putting it as like that okay so what you do to find the basic angle alpha is to multiply through by tan inverse so when you multiply through by tan inverse you are going to remain with alpha is equal to uh, tan inverse of 2.7 five then you get your calculator and say shift because you are looking for tan inverse shift then tan in brackets put 2.75 2.75 then is equal to so you can see that we are finding 70.016 so uh, the basic angle alpha is 70.0168 so which means that alpha is equal to 70 degrees so in the first quadrant here a uh, tan is 70 is positive and is 70 degrees but this is not part of our solution because our solution is starting from 180 to 270 so now what are we going to do for us to find the angles that are ranging from 180 to 270 so to find theta you're going to say theta is equal, is equal to the basic angle plus because from here you are moving like this up to here is 180 so we're going to say the basic angle plus 180 degrees so the basic angle is 70 plus 180 degrees this is 70 degrees then we're going to have 70 plus 180 70 plus 180 is equal to 250 is equal to 250 degrees so meaning this is the only solution that is satisfying this condition thank you very much for watching if you are new to this channel please consider to subscribe hit the like button comment and share